Hi, my name is Matt, and I'll be your host over the next hour or so for the Conspiracy Theorists Were Right presentation that presents absolutely no conspiracy. Well, how's that? But what if I told you that you know almost nothing about the ideas, things, and concepts that should be fundamental to almost everyone, should be fundamental to almost everyone on earth? You know nothing about these things? Would that get your attention? Would you still make fun of your crazy brother-in-law and call him conspiracy theorist over Thanksgiving if I can prove that you have the very basics of your life wrong? Well, crazy brother-in-law, this presentation's for you. So we'll start with this warm-up question, just so you get a general sense as to how this presentation will go, how almost everybody has no idea about the very basics of life as it's presented, especially through the media. But there is no trick answer or anything like that. If I say what color is the basic apple, it's not so you try to remember that a green one's called Granny Smith, and if I say it's red, you say, well, there are green ones. There's no tricks here. There's no tricks here. I'm going to say, what color is the basic apple? If you looked it up in a Pictionary Dictionary, most people, of course, you'd have to answer red, right? Wrong. Basic apple isn't red. There's no tricks here. Red is the color that you see, but it is the color that the apple rejects, the frequency of light in the spectrum that the apple rejects. The apple itself is all colors but red, for the most part. You see red because it rejects red. The apple is not red. You're seeing the one thing it's not. So how do you know that how, in terms of you're being fooled in terms of what you're seeing, how do you know that's limited to color? How do you know you're not seeing a manipulation in other areas? So most people would say red. No, the apple is everything but red. So let's start the presentation where I will ask you a series of questions about the most basic things in the world, things that you would just think, well, any first grader should be able to rattle off the answer. You're wasting my time here. But you'll, you won't know any of it. Trust me, you won't know any of it. Well, you might know little bits, but you say, how do I not, not know that? How come we didn't learn that? Yeah, I see that now. The most basic things in life, nobody knows. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm not talking about Forrest Gump's sitting on a bench. Oh, partners in law firms will get this wrong. Senior vice presidents in drug companies will get this wrong. PhDs, quantum physicists at Stanford will get this wrong. It kind of supports that crazy brother-in-law again sitting around the Thanksgiving Day table. Okay. What is Christmas? What is Christmas? I'll wait a few seconds. We pause the video if you're not sure how to structure your answer. What is Christmas? Well, trust me. You don't know. Almost no one knows. That's Jesus' birthday, you idiot. Uh, nope. There isn't a piece of evidence anywhere in the world that supports December 25th or Christmas as Jesus' birthday. Let me repeat that. There isn't a piece of evidence anywhere in the world that even points to December 25th as being Jesus' birthday. Neither your priest nor the Pope himself could produce any evidence in this regard. It's entirely made up. Did you know that? It's easily researched. This is Again, there's no conspiracy theory, theory here. None. Easily researched. And confirmed even in the mainstream, which is very difficult typically when a conspiracy theorist makes their presentation. Usually it's not confirmed in the mainstream. This is. So Saturnalia is the ancient holiday that's held for the winter solstice. The shortest days and longest nights were called the time of Yule. Did you ever hear that associated with Christmas, Yule? The longest nights and the shortest days were associated with the time of Yule. Saturnalia was the ancient Roman holiday in honor of the god Saturn, or Kronos, the god of time. Now we should say is, and not was, because it's still observed today. Saturnalia, observed every year, December 25th. Observed by who? By you. In Rome, Saturnalia was known as a time of revelry and drunkenness. Even the slaves were allowed to talk back to their masters during Saturnalia. At some point, the Vatican Church took this date for its own, perhaps to extinguish a holiday in the name of a Greek titan in favor of something that it was out to control. 
The best evidence that supports this shocking accusation of Christmas are all the pagan traditions, terminology, and rituals carried forth from Saturnalia and even other pagan celebrations into modern Christmas. And they're not hard to find. These are the things that make Christmas what it is to most people. The two biggest are Santa Claus and the Christmas tree. For now, I'll just cite one example, how Yule, the pagan term in tradition, has found its way into modern Christmas. The term Yule comes from Saturnalia, as previously mentioned, and other solstice rites as well, and describes the shortest day of the year in terms of sunlight. Around the world, for potentially thousands of years, Yule logs were needed to get through the darkest and coldest times a pagan family would ever face. It's a tradition that goes back millennia. Yet, on December 24th, we have tens of millions of Americans and other millions throughout the West carrying in their Yule logs, placing them by the evergreen tree, all pagan, and telling their little kids that they're celebrating Jesus. Really? Dripping hot candle wax inside a pentagram would be no less inappropriate in celebrating Jesus. It's not a joke, it's a fact. Most parts of the Christmas holiday have no Christian tradition. And that's putting it mildly when I say most. Whatever people consider to be Christmas has zero relationship to a Christian tradition. Yet this is what Christians believe they're celebrating. Not just picking on Christmas Christians here. There are tens of millions of others that celebrate Christmas that have no idea what it truly is, and maybe would think twice about it if they did. Mistletoe is an ancient Druid fertility symbol. Fertility. Why do you think people kiss under it? And that tradition is carried forth. Decorating with holly has pagan origin. Presents were also part of Saturnalia, going back as far as the written language, and gifts wrapped in a box. The box or cube is the sign of Saturn, thus Saturnalia. The point here is simple. How could we not know collectively as a population, not know the very basics in terms of what we consider to be the basics of our lives? We all know that merry song of the season, right? The 12 days of Christmas on the first day of Christmas. Like I have to sing and everybody doesn't know it. A partridge in a pear tree is so much fun and that's what I wish for. I don't care about Xbox. Just give me a partridge in a pear tree. What the hell's that going to do for me? But has anybody ever stopped to think about what the heck this even means? What 12 days of Christmas? Joe, how many days are Christmas? One. Yeah, Christmas Eve, Christmas morning, maybe two. Where's this 12 come from? I don't know. How many days of Hanukkah? Eight? Well, where'd they get the 12? What is this? Hmm. This ain't Hanukkah. Guess how many days of Saturnalia there are. Ah, you guessed it. 12. Just like 12 signs of the zodiac that dominate astrology. Oh, now you're bringing astrology into a Christian tradition. You don't, don't go there. Oh, why do you think it's 12? I'm telling you where it came from. I'm telling you this is all easily researched. I'm telling you you know nothing about the most basic things in your life. Again, we sing the dumb song, and not one of us ever questions what the heck this 12 days is all about and all these different things. No one receives gifts for 12 days. On the second day, I receive this. Well, what's that all about? Even Hanukkah doesn't do that. What is, what is, how many lords of leaping are there? Ten? I, I don't know what to do with one of them. Somebody gives that as a gift to me, I'm going to take it back. The blatant pagan ties associated with Christmas are everywhere, and no one questions it. This very last Christmas, I'll tell a personal story. Uh, my cousin, who's much younger than me, grew up with a, another girl who's older than her. They were in the D.C. area. This woman is one of the brightest women you'll ever meet anywhere in the world. She was taken by the sultan and the king of the United Arab Emirates. Is it, is it uh, I'm sorry, it's not UAE, it's Qatar, Qatar or Qatar. She designs skyscrapers and has been there for 20 years, attends balls at the sultan's palace. We were singing Christmas carols, which my uncle likes to do, and I approached Christina, and I said, do you have any idea what you're singing right now? 
what is 12 days of Christmas and what does it have to do with what you know of the holiday of Christmas? The woman that designs skyscrapers, who probably makes millions of dollars a year and lives in Qatar, turned to me with her jaw dropped and, and basically said to me, I, I never even thought about it. I mean, really? This is not, guys, this is not isolated to Christmas. Across the board, this is the world in which we live. Just about everything associated with Christmas today has nothing to do with Christ. But I see 50 bumper stickers every season that says, Keep Christ in Christmas. What you mean, Kimosabi, keep Christ in Christmas? Christ ain't never been in no Christmas. Christ is in the name, sure, but that's all. In Philadelphia on January 1st, there's something called the Mummer's Parade. It's massive. If you include spectators, it's likely a million people are involved in some way. It's all very strange if you didn't grow up in the Philadelphia area. The first three hours or so of the parade are called the Comics, where the crowd watches group after group coming down the street dressed in outfits that make Mardi Gras look drab. It's performers running around dancing in bizarre fashion, and I mean bizarre, performing absurd acts. At least in the old days, about 80% of these comics were extremely drunk. Not so much anymore. Hundreds have been seen over the years passed out in the streets. See, I'm not cutting up mummers. I'm just explaining to you, guess what we have again? This is the revelry carried forth from the ancient holiday Saturnalia. The comics start early on New Year's Day, meeting around 6 a.m. So it's likely many or most simply stay drunk from the night before New Year's Eve, and they never went to sleep at all. This is the revelry and their traditions of Saturnalia carried forth over a millennia. Hundreds of years ago, during the 12 days of Saturnalia, each city, town, or jurisdiction dedicated a man to be known as the Lord of Misrule. The Lord of Misrule. It's likely this is where the Master of Ceremonies adage or tradition came from. Even potentially Lords of Leaping stems right from this. Now, this Lord of Misrule, sorry, Lord of Misrule, his job was to oversee the making of Murray and general bacchanalia of his region, okay? His region. There were many, um, you could say, master of ceremonies or lords of Misrule throughout the land. Of course, a Western Europe tradition, okay? He oversaw also something called the Feast of Fools. In some jurisdictions, the Lord of Misrule held more power, at least temporarily, then the king, during, guess what, a 12-day reign. Sound familiar? Amazingly, there's actually a recorded precedent of several kings of Europe, per tradition, turning over temporary local governorship and government to the Lord of Misrule. Now, one of the big traditions of this time was role reversal, where peasants no longer took orders from their nobles. During this time of revelry, there were also mummers, which means masker. Roaming bands dressed in costume would perform comical acts. They would play music and make merry, and of course, have lots of wine and mead. Mummers would knock on doors and demand gifts in return for poorly crafted and often slapstick comical acts, sometimes making enemies with the local pastor by interrupting church services. For this short period of time around solstice, anything went. What happens in Philadelphia during the Mummers Parade is more true to the ancient roots of mummering than anything else in the world. The Mummers Parade truly looks ridiculous and so strange to the outsider if you're not from Philadelphia. For years, the ancient tradition was adhered to, and women were not even allowed to march in the parade, I think through the mid-80s. So hundreds of men dressed up as women. Cross-dressing was a huge part of the Philadelphia Parade for decades. Now, this is not to imply these men were gay. These men were not Caitlyn Jenner's, I assure you. There's no RuPaul's here. They'll kick your ass. This is simply the ancient tradition of mummering from hundreds of years ago carried forth. In the tradition of Saturnalia, it was all very common, just for fun. Trust me, again, these were the straightest drag dressers of all time. It's mostly Irish and Italians from the South Philly neighborhoods, with the only difference between the two being the Italians are juggling more girlfriends. Drag dressing was common with mummers going back to about 1600 AD. The peasant men 
back in the day would dress up like their knights and nobles and give orders to their knights and nobles. But when that wasn't much fun anymore, they dressed as women. Mummering over Saturnalia was about role reversal and stepping outside of your boring life, squeezing cow udders about 360 days a year. Also, you know, some, some bread and circuses need to be thrown to the peasants from time to time. The, the nobles, they carry forth that same thing today. They, they have to throw bread and circuses from time to time so the slaves don't revolt. It's the same themes carried through the ages. The ancient mummers, though, truly had, for a short period of time of 12 days, their lords a-leaping. Now back to the main point. If 1,000 people during the mummers' parade in Philadelphia were interviewed by my team, I recruited me and you, we got out there and just talked to people in the stands, talked to the mummers, talked to the organizer and organizers, and we asked all these mummers and big fans of the mummers to explain to us the origin and traditions of what they were watching, only about one in a hundred would be able to cite probably any part of the real history I just presented, or even less than one in 100 would know the basics or the main parts of what I just went over. About 95% of those marching would have no idea past one or two things just discussed. Now, this is a good lesson. As we explore exactly what reality is, we must understand that most things we do in life and what we know, we take for granted and don't know. People live their lives at the surface level of knowing, only what comes through television. Almost all of our holidays and, have, are, and basic rituals, everything we do as a society, has a hidden meaning of some kind that has been lost on the iPhone population and generations. Basically, it was lost on anybody that set their eyes upon the television set past 1960, but I'm being conservative. In summary, the Mummers Parade sees tens of thousands of good Christians participating in a tradition of pagan origin, which means at its core, it celebrates gods that their own church calls demonic. The church calls pagan gods, of which there's a variety from the gods of Greek myth to the Norse Odin, they call it all pagan and they associate it right alongside uh, the word demonic. Yet everybody's out there doing it, good Christians, they have no idea what they're doing, and what I'm asking you to again to consider is how is that possible? How is it possible even the most devout Christians don't know any part of what was just presented in total, not just about Saturnalia, but about Christmas itself? Why hasn't there ever been a story about it on the evening news? You know, I mean, what is this? What are these images of Christmas presented to us? Why wouldn't it be on the evening news? Aren't we told that just all the evening news people and all the leaders of, of government, they're just all atheists? And scientists, they're all atheists. Celebrities, they're all atheists. News anchors, aren't they out to get Christianity and belittle Christ? Isn't that what we're told? Why wouldn't they be making Saturnalia connections all day long around Christmas, just telling you over and over, you're not celebrating Christ, it's Saturnalia. Why do they hide it? Why do they, is it up to me to tell you? The answer is, in general, and you have to be open-minded to this, I can't give you the last page of the story now, I can't take you to the story's end, but in general, something else is going on. And I know that sounds really strange or kind of funny. Something else is going on. Well, what does that mean? Again, I can't explain it to you now, but don't try to put it back on me. I just showed you, you know basically nothing about the most basic thing in the world. How is that possible? How'd you do in terms of knowing the things that I presented? You didn't know hardly anything that I presented. Well, how's that possible? Again, how is that possible? Right now, all I can say is something else is going on. But then what if I show you, when we do the next topic, that something is just as basic as Christmas, and you didn't know anything about it. And then I show you the third topic, that's just as basic as Christmas, and you didn't know anything about it. How many times before you start to consider, well, am I getting the entire story? And then you can apply that to what's going on now. You didn't know anything about the origin of Christmas and all the, the pagan tradition that's just not subtly in it. It is the pagan tradition, everything people are doing in the holiday season. But then they'll turn on the news tonight, watch CNN, watch the government's presentation and the governor's presentation and Dr. Fauci's presentation of this virus, and they'll believe every word of it. 
So everything presented on CNN about what's going on now is completely as it's presented, but the same media sources have never told you anything about what the most basic thing in the world is or should be, Christmas. They haven't said anything about that, and you've been misled your whole life. But when you watch the news tonight about what's going on with the CV virus, that will be 100% accurate. You see how you can't have it both ways. Part two is coming.